Um, so as we kind of discussed, you know, as I written in there, guys, if these are zeros, that means we can write these as you know, equal to x. Negative 3, x is equal to 1 fourth, and x is equal to negative 1. Fair enough. Now again, we know, like, how did we get those numbers from the zeros? Well, we got them because we took factors and set them equal to 0. So we can take each one of these zeros, and, or each of these values, and set them equal to 0. Now again, that's going to provide us what the factor, factors are that we're going to want to multiply. So I'll just you know, use my inverse operations here. Now, the one thing I want you to avoid is this. Because that is correct in some form. Like, there's nothing mathematically wrong that you did there. The problem is, do you, does anybody really want to multiply with fractions? No. Like, that doesn't sound fun at all. And plus, our polynomials, we typically do not like to have fractional coefficients. So why don't we instead multiply by a 4 on both sides to get us 4x equals 1 and then subtract the 1? Does that still give us the same 0 of 1 fourth? Yes. yes. But now we don't have to work with fractions. And then hopefully you guys um, understand this one's going to be there. OK? So now we know that we got these factors. We set them equal to 0 because we were trying to solve. Now we know that if we just multiply the factors, we're going to get our polynomial. So I can say you know, f of x, or whatever the name of my polynomial needs to be, is going to be an x plus 3 times 4x minus 1 times a x plus 1. But the original problem has multiplicity, right? Mm -hmm. That means negative 3 has a multiplicity of 2. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply that. Hopefully, you guys can do this relatively simply in your head. You know, this is going to be, remember, x plus 3. Remember, that's uh, x plus 3 times x plus 3, right? OK? So that's going to give you a x squared plus 6x plus 9 when you apply distributive property or FOIL. This, you can multiply this out to give you 4x squared. I'll do distributive property there. Um, plus 4x minus 3x, no, I'm sorry, minus x, minus 1. So let's see here. We get an x squared plus 6x plus 9 times a 4x squared plus 3x minus 1. And now we have a trinomial times a trinomial, which ah, that doesn't look like fun. But could we do it? Yeah, we can go and do it. We could probably go into our box method would probably be my advice. And let's just do, let's put one here. And let's put one here. OK, so this gives you 4x to the fourth, um, 24x cubed, 36x squared, 12x to the fifth, 18x squared, uh, 27x. This is a negative x squared, negative 6x, and negative 9. Yes? I have no idea. Which one? I have no That should be a 3x. 3x squared, right? I was looking at something else. Oh, I think I was doing that. But yeah, it's 3x times x squared. Did anybody else notice any other mistakes? I was trying to do it as quickly as possible. So anyways, my final polynomial, which I'm going to write down way below, sorry, is now, remember, just combine your like terms on the diagonal. So that's 4x to the fourth. These should be like terms, which is 27x cubed. These should all be like terms, which they are. So that's going to be a, what, 54, so 53. This would be a 21 and then minus 9. Now, the question is actually not done, though, yet, is it? No, because I actually gave you one more piece of advice, or one more piece of information. I said that the leading coefficient needs to be 8. Could I just multiply everything by 2? Yes. Now, you could obviously redo it. I kind of ran out of space. So I'm just going to put a parentheses around everything and say everything should be multiplied by 2. Does multiplying by, by 2 change the zeros? No, because if you, what would be the first thing you could do here? Divide by 2 on both sides, right, and find the zeros, and it wouldn't even matter. 
Okay? So basically, you just want to look at, you know, when you tell you what the leading coefficient is, if you multiply everything out and you don't have that leading coefficient, you just need to determine what your scalar needs to be to get to that leading coefficient, right? The scalar, though, is not going to impact your value, though. That was fun. <laughs>